He's a mighty God. We thank him for who he is because only what we do for Christ will last. Reach out and take somebody by the hand. We call on the greatest teacher in the whole universe. We call on the power of the Holy Spirit because he's the only lamb and he's the only one that can feed us. Bread of heaven, feed us until until we're radically changed. Feed us until we make a commitment to change. Feed us until we eat and just don't lay it aside until it does something on the inside. Shall we call on the Holy Spirit through the auspices and the authority of the name of the Lord Jesus to help us right now. Every head bow. Reach out and take your sister and brother by the hand. Father, we need you. You called this time into existence. And there's absolutely nothing. Nothing more important than stepping into divine destiny. You have called us into the kingdom for such a time as this. And we pray right now to the greatest teacher in the universe in the authority of the name Jesus. Master Lohrokasa stretch out your hand now. Stretch out your hand now and feed us. Deliver us. Heal us. Save us. Beat back the forces of adversity now. We need to go home different. We need to go back to the hotel different. We need to go back to our cities changed into our marriages change back to our churches change don't let Azutha just be a colloquial expression but let it be a manifestation change us in Jesus name anoint the preacher anoint your word anoint the hearer in Jesus name we pray can we say amen? amen before you sit down reach around and tell somebody Jesus is real come on tell him again he's real he's real he's real it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you our sisters and brothers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and what a privilege to be here with this great man and woman of God Bishop and First Lady Pearson we thank God for them and what God has anointed them to do in this particular time and in this particular decade we honor the Spirit of Jesus Christ in the Ecclesia we don't know all of their names but most definitely they are anointed men and women of God doing a great work and we thank God for the host of Levi. What would we do without music? We thank God that he's called these things into existence. Would you reach around and tell somebody, I'm glad you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, put your smile back on. Yeah, I'm glad about it. Saints, I don't want to be nothing else but saved. I just, I just want to be saved. I want to, I like Christianity. I like living holy. I, I like what Jesus does in my life every day. How many of you got that same testimony? How many of you know this life is better than any other life you've ever lived? Reach up and touch somebody and say, sure, you're right. The Lord is a good God and he's a mighty king. We're going to try to be very expeditious in the power of the Holy Spirit and we're just going to ask you if you will and there's two passages but we're just going to use a situation text and we'll bring you up as the Holy Spirit will allow us and permit us to do so uh, our situation text is coming out of the book of Numbers 25 and um, our 
theme is coming out of the book of Isaiah. So if you will turn with us to Numbers 25 and put your hand in right there and um, we'll try not to hold you and belabor you long. After you get to Numbers, will you go to Isaiah 53? You know it. Now the situation text that we're looking at in the book of Numbers is where you are um, looking at some holotry or some things for the reasons why you can run into a curse. And then you look at Deuteronomy, which, which would, you know, be for your own scripture notes. You would go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 that would deal with blessings and curses. And then we're just going to walk through and just look at a couple people trying to curse and then mm -hmm, and then we're just going to look at God do some things in the book of Isaiah 53 so will you turn with us there and just uh, I'm just trying to cut down a lot of reading for you so that you know where we are anyway 53 And verse number one, if you have it, say amen. amen. Come on, give God a good amen. Amen. Yes. He's the greatest God in the world. Come on, amen. Yes. Come on, 53 and one. Come on, let's read it together, shall we, in concert. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected of men a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows huh no y'all not reading that right verse 4 surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did esteem him what stricken smitten of God and afflicted verse 5 but he was wounded our transgressions what and bruised for our iniquity everybody that's included in this thing and the chastisement of our peace was upon him come on and with we are here verse 6 everybody that's included in this what all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the what Verse 7 says what? He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet, open not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Can we say amen? amen. Let's say amen again. Amen. God is a mighty God. Reach up and tell somebody that's the only reason why I'm standing here is because of what he did. Because of what he did. In Numbers 25 you'll see Israel gathered in her tents and I'm going to reach over and uh, ask you to just tell somebody I'm not cursed anymore. Come on, just tell him I'm not cursed anymore. Come on, look at him in the face. Don't let him talk to you the side of your face. You know, people do that. 
when, when they come to things like that, they give you no respect. Just tap them, say, honey, I'm talking to you. I'm not cursed anymore. Mm -hmm. And see, some of you still let them ignore you. Put your hand on them, say, wait, man, wait now, wait, wait, wait here. Wait, I'm talking to you. Now look at them in the spirit of God and say, God told me to tell you. I'm not cursed anymore. Come on, let's shout hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some more praise. Sisters and brothers, uh, what a thing the Holy Spirit has absolutely created for this particular time that we're living in. He has anointed leadership here to rally you and I together around this theme and still look at Jesus as the one who destroys every curse. Can you imagine in the day and age that we live in right now, we are in the best time of our lives. Look at somebody say, this is the best time now. This is and you tell them why it's the best time. Tell them because God called me to this time. You don't get another chance. You're not going to be reincarnated. This is the best time. You got to take a good shot at it. And do your best to accomplish everything God has called and anointed you to do. Look at somebody and say, this is the best time for me, honey. I, don't, I, I can't speak for you, but this is my time. The Lord spoke to my heart and and told me that my assignment here was to uh, study about curses. And um, I thought I would just be able to, you know, do something nice and light. But um, the Lord wants us to talk about curses. And um, that's a big subject. I thought it would be just a little bit tighter. Um, it's a, a subject like love, which is very extensive. Um, uh, when you say things like God so loved the world, you can go on and on and on and on. Um, but here we are, and I'm going to ask you to travel with me in a couple of different places. And I'm going to ask you to go with me because if you stay here, you, you won't catch it. Look at the person next to you and tell them, listen, you can't go home the way you are right now. You, you got to go. You got to go. You, you got to go away from here. Tell them, go away from here, huh? Come on, go away, go away now. Go, go with the Spirit, go with Him. If you go with Him, I'll be blessed. And the Lord, I start looking at some definitions um, like we all usually do. And, and the definitions were quite alarming. Just to read some that you probably already heard of. But it uh, says, one who calls on God or his gods to bring evil upon another. Curse. To take a profane or an obscene oath. A curse. To have evil coming as in an answer to a curse. To call evil down on, curse. To afflict, to swear, to blaspheme, to be cursed with a suffering from, cursed. To be under a curse, curse Kabbalah, swift, small, sharp. Figuratively, it means a vile blight, bright, and to bring into contempt, curse, to de despise, to make someone move, watch it now, curse, it means to wet or to make under esteem, not to esteem, 
curse, to extricate, to be bittered against, curse, to vilify or vilification, curse, to bestow upon, curse, to malign, to extricate, to stab with words. to scoop out not lift or place to scoop out to malign curse to be violent to puncture to libel to bore holes in curse, to pierce, to strike, curse. And it goes on and on and on and on because you have to say curse and that's all we touched. But then there is curseth, cursing, cursed. Sisters and brothers, God has handed us a topic that you and I have to deal with. Look at somebody next to you and say, I hope you're not living under a curse. When we look at where we are today, many of us, unfortunately, have had to deal with some of these borings and stabbings vilifications and uh, being scooped out. When the Lord spoke it, I said, well, I'm, I'm not too sure about what this is, but I'll study it. And uh, he just said, just study curses. So I said, well, after I finished studying, then I went interviewing some older people who knew what it was to live up under a curse. They had come from some strange backgrounds and um, they had come out of some strange situations because their parents were connected to slavery and uh, they had come out of a background in the heart of Africa where they dealt in spirit one of the words or definitions for curse is to be a spiritualist. Huh. They had dealt with some mystical powers to bring themselves into a position. Now, I asked God, I said, well, why wouldn't people just... Uh, follow just your word and wait some things out is because through studying about curse and curses and curseth and cursed there's a strange thing about humanity and that being one humanity is addicted to knowledge and the other addiction is power there's two things that humanity, man, woman, is kind of hung up on since the Adamic fall. And that is knowledge and power. If I could get the knowledge, then I can access the power. Well, likewise, some of our forefathers dealt in some of these arts and uh, it was for knowledge and for power. If you have the power you can bring wealth. If you have the knowledge you can know how to access the door to open for it. If you have the knowledge you can heal or you can bring your enemies under subjection. 
knowledge, power. If I just had the power, I could just make some things happen. I don't have to wait on them to happen. I could make some things happen and I could make some people do some things a little different if I just had the knowledge and the power. Sisters and brothers, this thing is not to bring us to uh, some uncanny knowledge, but it is to share with us what is really happening in our particular time and generation. I talked to uh, a couple people, and I won't um, give their names, but they're saved now, thank God. But before they were saved, they wanted to know the future, and they wanted to get out of trouble, and they wanted to break a curse because they were under a curse that somebody had put on them. So they had to go to someone who had more power in this particular area to loose them from what they had already been restrained by. When they went to the individual, they said, well, I can't help you because your spirit uh, has already been identified with the forces. And the person who has cast the curse upon you, his spirit has already come here to me. I'm afraid to deal with it because if I deal with it, I'll get in trouble. I can't lift this curse. Now, they were breaking out, they were itching, they were losing their hair, they were losing their health. They were losing their business, they were losing their finances, all because dark powers utilize manipulation and domination. If you refuse to be dominated, and if you refuse to be manipulated, then you fall up under a curse. People who are spiritists, who have lit themselves to the knowledge and for power to dark forces. They went to another individual paying money. Can you at least just break it, reverse it, or stop it? Losing weight, sickness coming on, disease coming on, attacking them fiercely. One of them told me they could just look at their arms and scratches would just start appearing as if somebody was clawing them physically. They said, look what the devil is doing to my body, to my mind. One lady didn't make it under this particular person's uh, cursing because they ended up losing their mind. I asked, I said, well, tell me as much as you can, how does it feel? What, I see the manifestations, I, I, I know what you're saying, I, I can kind of almost understand, but what, what was it like living under domination intimidation and suppression they said it was like being a slave because you willed to do opposite but you were made to respond you willed to be better but you were made to comply you desired not to be used and abused sexually but you had no control you held on to the last piece of your mind 
because you fought it with your will but didn't have the strength to overcome. Cursed. Under a curse. I said, well, 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 why? Why? It's because when you refuse and you start to rebel, instead of lose you, they curse you. I said, well, how did you ever come to know Jesus? They said, because at an early age, my mother told me, whatever you do, whenever you get in trouble, get in contact with Jesus. They said, I would repeat in my mind, even though I didn't have the physical control or the physical will, I would repeat in my mind, God, whatever you do, deliver me. Set me free. Give me a chance to do it all over again. Well, sisters and brothers, go with me to the book of Numbers in your mind and see somebody who wants to bring believers under a curse. You'll see there Israel sitting in a field. And while they're sitting there in their tents, King Balak is quite upset because Gog has already fallen. And he knows as far as Cana is concerned, he's next on the agenda. Let me share something with you that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Everybody is not excited about what excites you. Everybody is not happy about what's making you happy. Everybody's not jumping up and down and applauding that you are saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. There is a force and some servants to that force that have every intent of destroying you whatever way they can. You can be peacefully abiding in your tent and following God's will for your life. But there's a force that says whatever I can do to stop you and not literally stop you, scoop you out. Bring you under duress. Put my foot on you to destroy you. Pluck you to pieces so that you'll never be put back together again. Blind you, cripple you, make you sick with diseases. Take all your money. Whatever I can do to stop you, I'll do that and some more. There are some servants who are under a blood curse to destroy you. Sisters and brothers, well, here... Because of the will of God, these people are coming, stepping into promise. But before they can step into promise, they have been warned. They have been warned by Moses, these young men and women, on their way over to possess the land of Canaan, the promise of the Lord. They have been absolutely uh, told by him to whatever they do. Do not forget go. Now, most of the times when we're getting ready to get blessed, a lot of times we're just happy and that's all. But we're not happy and watchful. But I want you to hear from an old, seasoned, mature person who is not afraid of dark forces and not afraid of the force of light. Now, this old, agent, experienced, mature man, leader, mentor before these young children warns them over and over again. In chapter 28, 
you'll see the blessings and the cursings there. But when you drop back to chapter number seven, you'll see that he talks to them about being careful that they be not consumed. Now, you're getting ready to obtain promises from the Lord because the Lord cannot lie, but be careful that you be not consumed. Now, what he's talking to them about is, now your fathers were consumed in their own pride and their own lust, so don't you fall up under the same curses that your forefathers have fallen under. Now, you and I here in the decade of the 90s, which is very necessary that we be here because God has called us here. But watch, in our particular age and decade that we now live in, the church can fall to the point that the church can be manipulated, it can be misconstrued, it can be a good church but a sick church, it can be a powerful church but a limping church, it can be a mighty church and a weak church at the same time. Uh, what Moses is trying to do is make them aware of every damnable evil. Now, one thing you've got to understand about Christianity, we have an opposer and we have a contender against us. If we keep our eyes only in the sky, we for sure would be led astray because we forget who it is that is contending against us. Sisters and brothers, when you shout, it's all right sometimes to shout with your eyes open because everybody ain't happy for why you are happy. Huh? Sometimes when you sit down, it's just good to make sure where you're putting your water. Everybody's not excited about you being a pastor or preacher or apostle or teacher. Everybody's not happy. God is bringing us to a consciousness of dark forces so that you can understand there is a damnable evil, wicked, demoniacal power that is how to slaughter the righteous. Uh, the nature about God has a tendency to be harmless as a dove. But watch. Uh, look what he puts next. But be wise. Uh, be wise and scrupulous. Uh, be wise and understanding as a serpent. Have the wisdom to know if I don't have legs, I can move subtly. Mm. If I don't have fists to fight, I can move subtly. Subtly, uh, know how to have the subtlety of being a serpent but yet not harmless. Uh, know how to get out of the way uh, of things that have hoofs and things that have beaks and things that can stomp you and things that can destroy you because you don't have a shell to protect yourself from the weight. Neither do you have a way to defend yourself, sister and brother. Mm. Uh, be harmless as doves but be wise as serpents uh, sisters and brothers why serpent why serpent uh, why is he talking about a serpent uh, now nah, because it was one of the most worshipped things uh, in their particular time and for some reason it's a kind of a worship thing even on today mm. sisters and brothers here God tests us to see are we understanding what the curse is yeah it's good to be loosed but understand who the cursor is it's good to feel free because he who the sun sets free is free indeed but understand who the cursor is because some of us are having difficulty when we are loving God there's some trouble and we're being troubled by the trouble and we don't understand who the trouble is we're just saying in the name of Jesus but we're praying a misc we're casting out a misc we're just shooting buck shots and shooting gunshots and we're not aiming and pointing to slaughter we're just praying whatever it 
is in Jesus name help me the devil is a lie we going for the juggler tonight we going straight for the juggler come on give God some praise come on give him the praise come on give him the praise come on give God the praise now lose here the devil is a lie I said give God some praise yeah. hallelujah saints of God you have to understand he's talking about curses we have to understand what it is that's going on in the atmosphere notice when God deals with us he is dealing with us in the supernatural most of the times we stay natural and God is talking to us in the supernatural so that we don't understand it watch now the Bible talks to us about who we are and whose we are and in doing so it gives us identification with who we are in relationship with uh, once we understand we are the father's children he is our father immediately when he takes us out of darkness and plants us into the spirit of the body of light there are some things that go on in the supernatural this natural terra firma or aesthetics is not the real world most of us feel like what we are sitting on and what we are wearing and how we are feeling is so tangible have you ever felt somebody right next to you constantly all they're talking about are things or the aesthetic or the physical world there is a higher level there is a higher level and it's called for us the invisible or the supernatural world we are struggling to take on those supernatural concepts is necessary if you get stuck in the physical realm oftentimes Satan can hit us and we're thinking it's something physical when it is something supernatural we're looking for natural causation or natural answers and natural responses and we retaliate naturally no ma'am no sir you've forgotten you've been taken out of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son but the translation is from natural to supernatural watch now you are born again now you know that ain't natural uh, that's supernatural uh, you know you was only born once but uh, when we are in the concept of what's controlling this world uh, you are supernaturally born uh, you weren't at Calvary but you believe there was one you weren't even at the tomb but you believe there was one you weren't even there at the resurrection but sure enough you believe it it's because you're willing to step into the supernatural for your soul ah, but we're kind of cutting it short here just being solical is not enough um, or just being satirical is not enough um, sisters and brothers um, we have to come to a profound knowledge um, that we see and then we see um, that we know but then we show enough no um, that we understand but then we really understand uh, you've got to know how to shift you got to know that when you can't find an answer in the natural shift back and then shift up come on here come on here come on come on come on here come on we keep looking at maybe it's the political system maybe it's the philosophical arena that I'm hanging around maybe I'm not around enough people who are positive thinkers <laughs> ah then we switch from the turkey group uh, to the chicken group and from the chicken group to the buzzards and the vultures and ah, we think it's all natural no 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 <laughs> it's a supernatural happening <laughs> he translated you out of the kingdom of darkness watch it kingdom of dark watch it kingdom 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 of darkness um, darkness lost something and it's about to get it back 
say. Now, translated you out of the kingdom of darkness into kingdom, kingdom, kingdom of his dear son. Most of us get the translation only by water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus and through the baptism of the Holy Spirit and we stop there. We speak and it's over. And that's when the enemy comes in like a blood because you are ignorant. It's not that you don't have intelligentsia. It's, it's not that you don't have the ability to think or to have reasonable deduction and have the ability to deduce equations. That's, that's not what he's saying. He's saying you are ignorant because you don't know who you are, whose you are, and who you fighting against. So then brother, we're talking about curses. So here we are now, and and here we are trying to survive, and and and, and because we didn't study to show our to prove um, workmen that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth we are still answering stuff by the natural we're looking for natural answers for our natural situation and we forgot it's all supernatural and spiritual that's the reason why we look at Plato in uh, 428 and he's described uh, about people in his own humanity and in his own time and said um, a life which is unexamined is not a life even worth living <laughs> when you won't examine why and who you are the life is wasted it's not even worth living if all you can come up with is I am a Christian and I've been baptized and I speak with tongues and put a period behind that it's not worth living because this thing has grandeur it has power this thing has force this thing is supernatural it's, it's ubiquitous it's great it's humongous it's beyond the fathoming of your little infinitesimal mind it reaches and and then it got depth and it has height weight and and then it puts on strength sisters and brothers um, it has armies and nations um, invisible nations and armies so oh god if you could just look around this place uh, in the supernatural you could see some of them flying others standing uh, other ones hanging in the midst of the atmosphere uh, others blocking the doors and say not a devil can get in uh, if you understand Stood who you are and who you are, sisters and brothers. So the devil needs to confuse you. That's the reason why Socrates said in his particular time period in 470 BC, he said, well, there is only one evil in the world and that is ignorance. And uh, only one great good in the world and that is knowledge. Jesus says it unto us so that we can understand. You shall know you shall know the very mysteries of the kingdom because it's given unto you to know them not just quote scriptures know them now to know is to have a frequent familiarity with um, it's just not knowledge um, that runs through the head and nothing is being done when you take on knowledge and it's just not intellectual people change when knowledge becomes essence and source when knowledge takes on flesh when knowledge becomes energy then it becomes dangerous that's why the enemy's got to keep you ignorant, ignorant, ignorant. You gotta be a dumb bunny. You, you gotta be backwards. You gotta be aloof. You gotta be disconnected. You gotta just be flying from one shout to the next shout, from one tambourine bang to the next organ beat. No, no, no. But in between A to Z, there's a whole lot going on. And God is expecting you to get involved. Reach over and tell somebody, I'm, no, 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 I'm not going to be bound no more. I, I'm not under the curse. I, I'm somebody in him and I know who I am. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory.
Hmm. Voltaire, which is one of the great philosophers, then began to talk about his generation, which is several centuries later outside of Aristotle, Socrates, and Plato. And as he investigated his generation, and they are struggling under their curses and fighting with their spiritual demonized forces, he cried out, if there is a thing that God does not exist, then what I'm looking at, we will would have to invent God and because there's no other answer we can't get out of this mess by utilizing the strength of a man's hand or utilizing the limit ability of a man's mind if there is a thing that God does not exist in we must create him we need to create him but we speak back to Voltaire and tell him there is a God and he is God and you don't have to create him because he's never was created never will be created he always consists always exists he creates everything but he himself is never created he moves the circles of the earth why he himself stands on the circle of the earth governing all things reach over and tell somebody that's my God you know that's that's him that's him that's him, Shah, hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, curse. A curse, sisters and brothers, when we look at it, then we see here that these children are being warned by maturity. They are being warned by their forefathers not to get caught in to the last generation. Don't look for the last generation to help you out. Mm. Their experiences uh, are not that good when it comes to uh, spiritual aptitude. Um, as far as them fulfilling the lust of their flesh um, uh, they were good at that and you see where they ended up but as far as um, obeying God um, following on to know God um, trusting and obeying God um, they had a faulty existence um, he warns them and tells them by rehearsing the problems of disobedience of their parents um, not to fall under the curse mm. he says and then moves to chapter number 8 in Deuteronomy and says wait uh, uh, all these commandments that I've commanded thee this day mm. you observe them read them behold them dissect them and then turn around and do them mm. don't just read the book do it. Um, don't just know the law. Accomplish it in your life. Um, so then he goes on and continues to warn them. He said, beware um, that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, his ordinance. He said, I command you this day, remember he goes on and tell him again and gets to chapter 9 and verse number 7 he says again remember and don't you forget how they provoke God to wrath you remember and when you get out into the promised land don't depart from what I have taught you then he says in chapter 4 verse number 9 only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently watch out that you don't get pulled away here you are loving God and you can lose it all 15 he rehearses commandments again and says take heed therefore to yourself hallelujah whatever manner of attitude you are now understand what's going on and don't lose it verse 23 take heed to yourself again he cries out you're getting ready to be possessors but don't fall up under the curse before he walks off of the scene he declares to them in 28 and talks to them about blessings he 
categorizes each blessing that God has told them. He's told them how that they're going to be exalted. He talks about the blessings of God being health to their body. If you obey God, then you will have productive life. If you obey God and keep his commandments, you will prosper, be victorious, and God said, you'll have my favor. But then he cries out, if the iniquity in you, which was in your forefathers, and the word iniquity here is rebel. If you rebel against me, watch, rebellion is hooked up again, then we catch it in Samuel, because it's as the sin of witchcraft. So if you you work this kind of hooging where you get into the promised land and you go to rebelling then you start recognizing other gods as your god and you start disobeying parents and have lack of honor for your parents and if you start walking against the command and the statues of my judgment and begin to be unjust to those who are weaker and helpless among you if you start he goes on to tell them in the these blessings if you start to become illicit illicit and immoral in your unnatural affection sexually if you become those who curse Hebrews then uh, and Jewish people if you become those who lose confidence in God and start putting your confidence in the flesh and in the man and in yourself instead of in God if you start robbing me of my tithe and of my my offering and of other resources if you ignore my words when you know what I have spoken and what I've declared then then I will curse you and I will be a curse upon you of barrenness now watch it Israel's children are listening to these things and we don't ever want to be up under that how many of you no 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 that's, that's not me that's that's not what I want to be under but uh, watch what happens they get over into the land of promise after Moses has told them now be careful whatever you do I'm warning you whatever you do don't mess up God is serious now folk can use hooji and uh, God can break that power but uh, when you disobey God um, who breaks that power God said don't let me be a curse against you don't let me have to scoop you out um, villainize your lifestyle bring you to open humiliation barrenness and unfruitfulness don't let me give you mental problems and physical sicknesses don't let me break up your family because I will I'll bring poverty if you rob me I'll bring poverty and your money will be like a bag with holes I will defend Feed you in the presence of every one of your enemies. I will oppress you. I will oppress you until I overtake you. I will bring failure to every one of your projects. And I will dishonor and be a God that disfavors you every time I see you. <laughs> Reach over and touch somebody and say, honey, you don't want to fall under that. <laughs> Sisters and brothers. When you're looking at it, they've been warned. So they walk over into Canaan land. Tell somebody, walk on over, walk, walk. They get over the sea. Tell them, walk on over, walk, walk. When they get into the land of Canaan, then they're sitting in their tents and their hearts are fixed and they've decided, I'm going to live this life. I'm going to live a life of commitment to God. In the midst of it, then they start, the curses start coming, but they have no effect because the hearts of the individuals, which is Israel in their tents, have already decided, and even those who uh, want to curse them start prophesying. And he said, I can't curse them because the shout of their God is among them. 
Uh, they love their God. I can't curse them. I'm trying. But I can't stop them. I'm, I'm trying. But I'm going for every mountain. But then Balak said, well then curse them from this side of the mountain. Follow them follow me I can stop them maybe from this side maybe if you curse them from a head-on point of view then maybe you can stop them he starts again after sacrificing and God prophesies and said Jacob shall prosper and Jacob shall increase and ah he said why don't you stop now move 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 let's let's curse them from the back side let's go over on another side of the mountain and maybe we can stop them the thing that stops Israel from the power of the dark forces of demonic wicked curse is their heart their heart stops the curses because they love their God <laughs> when I start reading and understanding what God was saying then I heard God say now nah, talk to them about where their heart is concerning me some of us are speaking in tongues here tonight and uh, we're not understanding. We're really rebuking devils when it's God that's got a hand on us. <laughs> We're rebuking devils. We're just rebuking them. Say to the Lord God, rebuke you. I bind you, cast you out, take your filthy hands off. But it's not a devil that's against you. Your heart is being handled by God. The Bible says, whatsoever a man or woman soweth, that shall he or she also reap. The heart is desperately wicked, the scripture says, above all things, who can know it? Many of us are being scooped out and beaten with the rods of God. Bitter curses have cleaved to us even while we speak in tongues. The New Testament writer declares that bitter and sweet shouldn't come out the same fountain. But uh, we're looking and we're testifying and we're having curses at the same same time sisters and brothers some of our hearts have not been right for a long time we speak with lots of tongues we witness to the power of Jesus Christ but we've got bitterness and anger in our own hearts we step past individuals and slide down church walls and misspeaking to others of authority when the Bible declares if we dishonor our fathers and our mothers um, he would release a curse upon us um, most of us feel like it's just physical I told you we stay in the physical a long time but uh, it is supernatural some of you are greatly disrespectful to your leaders in your home church mm. you do what you want when you good and well get ready mm. and because of it curses uh, from God have attached itself to you now did not the Bible said he and his word goes forth out of his mouth uh, it shall not return to him void but uh, it shall go down into the thing and accomplish uh, some of you thought just that was only for the sinner mm -hmm. and that was only to good uh, when you break God's law uh, concerning your life the curse is released mm -hmm. some of us are wondering why our churches and our saints are having problems some go back and check the scripture and see what kind of curse has been released in the individuals that's sitting right there in your pews right there in your house you're wondering why the money is growing funny wondering why sickness and disease and death is breaking out wondering why people are having nervous breakdowns after shouting all day Sunday get to the parking lot and lose their minds wondering how they can sing in the choir and get on the ministerial alliance and uh, lead church and then go to Motel 66 and exchange sexual favors. Uh, sisters and brothers, 
If you check this book out, uh, this Bible is right. Uh, this gospel is right. Uh, this word is right. Uh, and God is faithful to keep all of his word. Uh, the good and the bad. Uh, the Bible said he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Uh, God is just faithful to keep his word. Uh, he said before one just oh, one till of his word uh, would fail heaven and earth. Uh, would pass away uh, what do you expect just blessings uh, listen to Job when he said uh, woman shut up uh, what do you expect me to do uh, should I only receive good from God uh, God is faithful uh, whether it's good or bad he's still God uh, whether I'm up or down he's still God uh, whether I'm right or wrong he's still God uh, Shout hallelujah I know I know um, that's the reason why um, some philosophers tell us that we're really not as spiritual as we think that we are just religious we are addicted to the antics of the church and its liturgies but we really are not addicted to its God um, that's the reason why they say we're high and religion has become an opium to the people uh, we gather together to clap and sing and, and joyous occasions and this is right to do that's Bible honey when you come together you have to praise it and it's Bible right here that you don't even show up to God uh, without an offering that's also in the Bible he said I appeared not before me without an offering see 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 how we are see how we are we know some scriptures but we don't know all the scripture so the enemy seduces us and pulls us away into folly we get around and we chat around big boys talk about this one and that one no we mismatch scriptures uh, uh, not scriptures, scriptures. Mm. You know, you put a piece in and I put a piece in and we all give our own interpretation. Mm. Not scripture, we just mismatch scriptures. Mm. We just strip all of the understanding and we mismatch and sling mm. until all we're doing is eisegesis, no proper exegesis. We're not getting what God said uh, and we're only going to do what we want anyway because uh, our hearts are rebellious we shout and we're rebellious we clap our hands and we're rebellious we'll leave this holy conference and still go home bound because we won't go to our rooms and repent like this Bible said hallelujah sisters and brothers now you have to realize that the enemy is getting the up it's getting the up on some of us it's because we think that it's the devil it's the reason why I'm not financially successful it's the devil the reason why I'm sick is the devil well this Bible says that God will snatch your hair right out this Bible says God will close up your womb, close up your business, close up your love life, close up your mind. Listen, God will do it because our hearts are desperately wicked. We learn how to be religious and we become the best actors and actresses in this known generation. We wear pseudo facades. We make sure we masquerade properly. We masquerade with ukurudababasata. And thus saith the Lord. And our hearts are filthy adder spits. We're snakes waiting to lunge. We are bittered and embittered. Some women are so bitter against men, they are being cursed by the hand of God. Some men are so bitter against women until they are cursed by the hand of God. Because the Bible says, don't let that be in your heart, lest it spring up and spoil and defile 
defile you and then you turn around and defile others. Have you ever been with a bitter person? You start off talking nice about the individual and they swing around and say, but some, oh, sister, there's something down in their spirit. They've been just waiting for a pause so that they can put that bitterness in you. And you sit there like a dumb bunny and just eat it all up. All you went there for was a beef sandwich and you left there with a beef sandwich and a garbage can. Sisters and brothers, please recognize what God is saying. This topic is dealing with our hearts. The Bible talks to us and tells us that our enemy is shrewd. He'll let you just run around and you don't know the scripture. You don't know the word. You don't know that God could be a curse upon you and wipe you totally out. You miss your tithing and you scatter it around. Just decide, well, I'm going to use it on a dress today, a suit tomorrow, and then I'll pay this next month. No, you just released a curse on yourself that you can't handle. Then the others sit there with the scriptures and talk about, well, that's under the law. We don't do that. This is before the law, honey. But if you knew that, you would know how to keep yourself blessed. Sisters and brothers, then we move from one entity of life through the word to another. God said depression would come over you. And you've never been in a time where saints fall into depression more than anything. We got more mental saints. We got more mental saints today. Now, mental sickness used to be something that wasn't so much seen in our forefathers' church because we didn't categorize their mental disease by saying there was just a little ailment or affliction. What they did is brought you to the altar and cast the devil out of you. But what we do is we categorize it now. I have post this and pre-mortal that and I've got this delayed it and I've got this and I'm no 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 what they did is cast out everything and when your mind wasn't right then they went to ask you to confess because they knew it was a hard thing they asked you did you love everybody have you forgiven everybody now we swap war stories and horror stories you know I was abused and we turn around and say yeah yeah me too I was I was abused too and well I can understand why you act the way you act then because you've been abused and I say yeah well you know I'm just I've just been I just can't help it I'm just I'm just, listen how many of y'all been abused we all been in a bad way how many of y'all been how many here in this room life just went the way you wanted to go every day of your life raise your hand and raise your hands high How many of you know you ain't had a whole lot of wonderful days, but God brought you through them all? Look at the person next to you. We all been abused. Sisters and brothers, but we, we pity party and we don't know that we're just fostering demonic mental sicknesses and we put whipped cream on the sickness and cherries on top and put nuts on your sick mind and, and then we turn around and pat you and warm you and embrace you and say oh me oh my I used to think our forefathers were crude because they snatch you right out and then they just lay hands on and say jeez Just with all their might. And they just, when they wouldn't say, Luz, get back. Luz! And you thought you was just going to sit there and, and because you thought it was going to be over. They, they're going to just, they're going to let me go. Luz! Devil, come out of there. Jeez! Luz, sure hopes you foul, unclean spirit. This ain't the spirit of Luz! But here we are, we all degree down, mastered in BAs and four and five MAs and MSs and 
theological degrees, divinity degrees, and we ain't got the power they had with their sixth grade education. They said over and over again, the blood, the blood, the blood prevail, the blood. Here we are, we all systematic theology. Hermeneutic sex and Jesus know how to put the scriptures together, know how to interpret, know how to be refined, pull for tears, but no power. No power. People stagger in the church and stagger out the way they came in. People come in blind and go out blind and cripple. Ah! Sisters and brothers. Come in the church with one sickness and get in the church and got a whole slew of sicknesses. I was better off before I came in here. I didn't know y'all was like this. I didn't know church folks covered up like this. I didn't know saints cut up with this kind of foolishness. Lose your hope. Sitting under a curse and don't know it. Walking with folk and don't know. People can transfer curses. That mother told me, sis, I want you to understand they can pick up on your voice. They can take something off your body. Put evil spirits inside of it. Before you know it, you're being attacked all over. Ignorance is not a blessing, it's a curse. You better know what God it is you're serving and who it is you're in love with. Sisters and brothers, people can sit down and transfer curses on you. They in a curse and you buddying up with that curse. That curse is your best friend. You know they live in sloppy and two cents worth of nothing. You know they faking and pretending, but that's my cut buddy. You don't know if they walk under a curse, you under the same curse. You don't know that when you're blessed, you walk under a blessing. Just like goodness can transfer, a curse can transfer. Just like love can transfer, hate can transfer. Just like bitterness can transfer, peace of God can transfer. I've seen my forefathers do it. Walk right into a room of massive confusion their mere presence controlled the room hallelujah they brought the devil under subjection they brought the devil under their feet they brought peace in the midst of storm they was just like Jesus when he woke up peace be still you damnable foul wicked Spirit, uh, loose your hold off of God's property. Uh, reach over and tell somebody I can't live like this. Uh, not another day, not another second, not another moment. Shah hallelujah! Shah hallelujah! Shah glory! Glory! Put your hands together and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise! Oh, no, 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 no. God just sent me here as a regulator. Because a lot of stuff you rebuking, he put on you. A lot of stuff you casting out won't move because he put it on you. Because you got to get your heart right. The uniqueness about saints is they'll speak in tongues and have dirty hearts. This group hates that group and this group won't visit that group because they're more holier than the other group. And this group thinks about this about them. Oh, I'm so sick of the trash. Just trash is everywhere. Trash. And then I'm speaking in tongues but I'm prejudiced. How does that work? I can only love my kind of people. But God made them just like he made you. Huh? Just trash everywhere. Then you got to be understanding. Then you become a sexist. And, well, I, well I, ain't, I ain't with all that. Uh, you know, I'm not into all that, you know. 
Well, you know, women can do some things, but honey, ah, the devil is a liar. Come on here. It's in your heart. You don't know that you fight the will of God. Now, for those of you that are people who are under the curse, and then you start scaring scriptures again. Talking about all kind of crazy things like how women were cursed in the Garden of Eden. Find that scripture for me. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. That ain't in the Bible nowhere, but because you don't know the scripture, you sit around intimidated. When you know God called you, we got a whole lot of harvest to get in. You sitting around waiting on the evangelistic team. When God called you to witness and teach and preach the gospel and you sitting somewhere not knowing the word of God, feeling like you are cursed. Ignorance is not bliss. The only one that walked away with the curse is the serpent and the earth. They're the only ones that walked away with the curse. The woman had a predicament for her mess up. And the man had a predicament. But God didn't curse his creation. Now you got to understand something. If pre-adventure possibly, you get caught with somebody and you can't twist. Um, and you know that you're doing what God called you to do. Uh, understand that the Bible say, uh, if it was a curse thing, why would God say in Joel, uh, in the last day, uh, I'm going to pour out my spirit uh, on some flesh. Uh, your sons and daughters will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions the enemy wants you not to know this word cause he wants you to step in a hospital gown where the front looks good but your stuff is hanging out in the back he wants you to be naked so that the enemy can come in and destroy you but he says in 28 and 29 in Joel in the last day it's a last day revelation you'd be an end time son because not only would the Holy Spirit be on prophet priest and king but in the last yeah. It would be on women folk. Women were suppressed under the curse. Um, the curse of the death. Uh, only one was cursed was Satan. Uh, the serpent ran around and lent himself uh, to Lucifer, so he got cursed. Uh, he never walked straight again. Uh, he ate dust forever. Uh, but the woman found redemption uh, under those skins of blood because uh, the Bible says. No. Without the shedding of blood, no. there is no remission of sin. No. Why God only remit male sins no. and don't remit female sins? No. You know the devil crazy, ain't it? No. But the Bible says, no. in the last day, I would pour out my spirit no. on all flesh, sons and daughters, sons and daughters. Last, last. How many of you women got the Holy Ghost? How many of you brothers got the Holy Ghost? You're an end time sign. Acts chapter 2 verse 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all gathered in one place. Then a sound came from heaven like as such a mighty wind. And sat upon each of them and they were some feel all feel with the Holy Ghost that day Joel chapter 2 was fulfilled because it was the last day Acts chapter 2 and 1 was the last day Acts chapter 2 1 through 4 was the last day when Acts came we was in the last uh, you said a new thing happened, but we were in the last day. Uh, now from Acts 
listen now if that was the last day and the first century church how late you think it is now if Acts was the last day how late you think it is this is not just the last day we in the last of the last of the last of time shout hallelujah shout glory shout glory shout glory put your hands together and give God praise so say yeah so say yeah so say yeah say yeah say yeah put your hands together and give it the praise We running around holding each other back and don't know how late it is. It's real late, honey. God already marked the late schedule for you. When you see women preachers, it's late. It's late. It's real late. He marked the spiritual clock. It's late, honey. When sons and daughters you running around here with the scripture in your heart trying to convince the whole world of another gospel sisters and brothers this rebellion and this iniquity as we stand together is doing nothing but destroying who we are we have become the powerful but yet the mental church. The powerful, but yet the crippled church. Revelation chapter 3 demarks our place as a church of, or the age of Laodicea. We run around saying we see when Jesus said, you're so blind. I'm covered, he said, you're naked. You don't understand this thing, why curse? You came here just to get out of from under a financial curse because you thought it was a devil. But how are you going to move God's hand when God said, it's me cursing you? It's me cursing you because of your unfaithfulness, because of your inconsistency. It's me. I got my hand on you on purpose because I've asked you to forgive them over and over and you keep holding grudges. Instead of being the repairer of the breaches, you're making holes in the body of Christ. And God's hand is on you. But how do you come out from under that? Sisters and brothers, the only way we can come out is through the power of the name of Jesus. But you just can't say Jesus and not repent. There'll be no change until we repent. There'll be no, I'm doing better until we repent. And repentance cannot come just from our words. It's got to come from a transformation in our hearts. Repentance has to hit you. You've got to weep. And you've got to howl before God. Because you have lost so much precious time. You keep saying, I got time, I got no, you don't. We're in the end of the end of the end of time. We're far from the first century church. And that was the beginning of the end. And you're running around saying, I got time to change. Well, maybe when I see him, I'll fix it. No, no, no. You got to repent now. You got to change your heart now. Because you, me, and all of us can go out of here any second. Because everything has been fulfilled. But the coming of the Lord. Israel went over. But they forgot. He warned them. But they forgot. God is warning us. I pray that we don't forget. Deal with your heart. Repent. 
Some of you need to go back and tell your husbands, I'm sorry. Your wives, I'm sorry. Your children, I'm sorry. You can break your own curse if you would just repent. If you repent, he said, prove me and see when I rebuke the devourer for your sake. But you hold it with rebellion. And then you wonder why the marriage is going funny and the children are, and the money and the job and the business and the ministry. And because God's not playing. He spoke this before you came into the earth. That if you break this, the curse would come. His word, he would be against you. Church, we need to repent. We need to repent and turn from our wicked way. No wonder they call Satan the accuser of the brethren, the God of this world, the murderer, the prince of demons, the prince of the power of the air, the ruler of darkness. And that ruler of darkness really touches my heart because he's the ruler. He's the ruler over darkness. He has authority. Jesus has given you an eye authority. He has given Satan authority and everywhere there is darkness he can rule. That's why when your heart is dark, Satan has the right to come in. He has the right to mix up in your marriage and he's got the right to come and mess up with your business. It's because you let him in. Your heart is dark. He's the ruler of darkness. And that's why he can say to the Lord, I have a right to be here. See the darkness? And before one jot or till of your words shall fail, heaven and earth will pass away. See the darkness? I have a right to be here. Sisters and brothers, we're holding on to grudges, old hurts and pains, we got when we were children just don't know why we having problems because we're bitter I met a lady this week who was ministering in and out of Russia and she said the Lord told her I can't use you and she said why I have the Holy Spirit I'm saved he said because you got bitterness in your heart you don't like the Russian people how can I use you when you prejudice in your heart? When she dealt with the evils that the Russians had done to her people, the Lord said, now I can use you. Go and evangelize the Russians. Sisters and brothers, what is it going to take? How much does God have to break us, cut us off, we're praying and the heaven is like iron. And we're wondering what's wrong, Father. And he's saying, deal with your heart. Do you know what can happen here today? You don't even have to have a lie. If you would just repent. And forgive and get to people and say, I'm sorry. If you get to them and say you're sorry, you kill the spirit of pride. You kill him. I remember so, so clearly in the organization I belonged to at one time. The Lord said, I want to elevate you, but I can't. And I know I was fasting and praying. I love the Lord. I said, what's wrong? He said, you have to step back so that you can step up. They had never had a woman in elected office in that particular organization over the national body of young people. I went to the Lord and I said, well, what did I do? I'll, I'll make it right. When he started listing stuff, 
Ah. I had to find old, old, old phone. I had to find people who I didn't even associate with no more. It was so long ago. Get phone numbers and say, I'm so sorry, I was wrong. Get the next person, I'm so sorry, I was wrong, I, I'm so sorry. And I was weeping and crying. I thought I had dealt with it, you know? You think because it's not in your sight, it's dealt with. And you're trying to get somewhere in God and you keep hitting. And you can't go any further, it's because it's so hidden in your heart. It takes God to dig it up. And before you know it, I just said, God, I don't want to be nothing. I just want to be saved. I don't have to be nothing. I just want to be saved. I wept. I cried so. I was so ashamed and so embarrassed. But I had old junk in my heart. Since that broke something in them and it released something in me in the spirit realm. That curse was broken. That evil, that devil was defeated. How many of you know in your heart that there's some stuff in your life that needs to be broken? It needs to be broken. God bless you for being honest. Because most times people are afraid to be honest right in the house of God. They lie when help is right there. God is saying, you want me to help you? And they'll just lie and say, oh, I'm all right. Sisters and brothers, God has designed this conference this week so that we can be delivered, so that we can be set free. But no revival without repentance. Every head bow and every kind. Shall we pray? Father, Father, I ask you right now, we didn't spend the money and pack bag and baggage and some of us got here and just the mere fact that we decided to come all demonic hell broke loose our money got stranged but something in us told us get there because your deliverance is there and now here we are God and we have to deal with the theme that you've placed over the whole week so that transformation can come into the body of Christ. Some of us have been scooped out by you. Some of us feel the rod and some of us are standing in dry places. Some of us came here because the heavens have been like iron and the earth has felt like brass. Some of us knew we just had to come because we needed a turning in our homes, in our marriages, on our jobs, in our ministries. And we knew once we got here, we would get an answer. Because it felt like a curse. We take ten steps forward. And we have to back up three steps. Seems like we're repeating cycle after cycle which is the evidence of the possibility of a curse when we keep repeating cycle after cycle after cycle. Oh, Father, we get well and we're sick again. Sick, sick, sick. Cycle after cycle. We get some money and we lose it. It seems like we can't hold on to, can't save anything. The curse. It comes in one hand and out the other. Father, I pray tonight that we'll deal with our hearts and that we would repent today. We're so sorry. So sorry we've held on to this so long. God, please forgive us. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our thoughts. Forgive us for our actions and forgive us of our reaction. We've been mean and stubborn and selfish and stingy. Father, help us. 
Help us not to be afraid to see ourselves and say, God, I'm so sorry. My heart is not right. My thoughts weren't right. Oh God, I, I lied, I stole, I, I could have helped and I refrained from helping. Dear God, have mercy. You brought us under this thing to talk to us. To give us another chance to destroy the curses. We have wheeled in our spirits to do right and do wrong. The curse, the curse. We're living under your curse. And the only way you said you'd break the curse is if my people which are called by my name would humble repent oh God except we repent we will not be revived except we repent the weight of your hand is heavy upon us it's heavy on our homes heavy on our jobs heavy in our marriages heavy in our finances we have broken so many statues, so many laws, so many commandments. Through great grace, we are here today to hear you. And I pray, God, we respond in like kind and say, wash me. Wash me of filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Wash me. Wash my mind. Wash my spirit. Wash me, Jesus. I'm trying to work with dirty hands and a dirty heart. And I'm trying to work and my feet are dirty. I'm traveling in dirty relationships and dirty conversations. God, don't leave me like this. Don't, don't leave me under the curse. I repent. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry God I'm sorry I'm sorry I know what it is I know when it started I know what I did I know what I said I know how I I know I remember the day I remember it well and I repent right now thank you for this thing I have to deal with my business thank you for this thing I have to deal with my heart thank you Lord you brought me all the way here so that you could bless me. I'm coming out from under this curse. I'm, I'm coming out. I've cursed myself. I cursed my own self. This ain't the seven sisters. This is not who I cursed my own self. I was disobedient. I was wrong. And I'm going to make it right. Whatever I got to do, I'm going to make it right tonight. This altar call is for the saints. Those of you that are brave enough. And you don't care about folk. And you want God in your life. And you're ready to break your own curses because you know. You put the curse on yourself. This is our altar call. Come, 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 come on, honey. That's right, sis. That's right, brother. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If you repent, he'll bless your church, he'll bless your ministry, he'll bless your home, he'll bless your job. Come on, come on, come on. This is our altar call. This conference is for us. The altar is for us. The horns of the altar is for us. It's us that has to present our body a living self. It's us that has to say, I'm sorry. Oh. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, I put my say Come on, we're waiting on you. 
moment to repent come. See you! Now I see it's you and you. I need it with your help. I deny, I deny myself, I put. Come on, if you're willing to repent. You gotta repent. And with your help, I, I did not muster. And I put my hand. Come on, you gotta repent. Break your own curse. It's alright to weep. 
You at home, honey. The altar is home for the saints. You got a God that loves you. Break your curse. Repent. And when you get a chance, fix it. When you get back to the room, make a call. Apologize. Write a letter. Take the blame. Be guilty. Confess your guilt. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. Sis, I'm sorry. Honey, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I did this thing, this damnable thing. It's separated from me. And God, come on. You got to weep. It'll bless your ministry. It'll bless your marriage. Sisters and brothers. Just this week, somebody went through repentance. And for all this time, they were wondering what the problem was. And all God was telling them to do, if you just repent. They thought, because I'm saved, I don't have to repent. And they said, as soon as they repented and did it God's way, the business start flourishing. They lost millions. The business start flourishing. The family life increased. God said, I'll be against you. You can't break, I can't break a curse when the cursor is God. You can't break it. The only way you can break it is through repentance. And some of you know the stuff ain't right. What's happening in your life ain't right. It's not right. Let's don't let pride and stubbornness stay in our way. You home, honey. Altar is home for us. When we see ourselves, we throw our hands up and say, I'm guilty, Lord. I confess I'm wrong. I repent. Those of you that can't throw your hands up and tell God, but don't say it until you mean it. I know I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Don't just say it, but mean it from your heart. Repentance is not a word. It's an action that happens in the heart. It's a groaning. It's a deep groaning. A deep pant. A great grief that happens in the heart. Sorrow. When we're repenting, we're sorry. Sisters and brothers, for three days and three nights, us and our little bitty church, God told us about repentance. We shut in. You know, they used to have shut-ins long yeah. ago. We shut in for three days and three nights. We did nothing but repent. We didn't go to sleep. We didn't bring stuff to sleep in. Because God said, just repent. Sisters and brothers, after we got up just to eat breakfast the next morning because we'd have been up 24 hours we were eating together just reading the word chapter by chapter aloud together so we would be on the same spiritual level at the same time right at the breakfast table the holy spirit hit one of the saints said repent now we had did it all night people fell out of their chairs and we went to weeping and crying all over again. God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I offended you. I'm sorry I'm wrong. I did it wrong. I've been religious. I've just been walking over it, just going to church. I'm sorry. We wept and cried and went from the breakfast table back in the prayer rooms again and stretched out and wept. We wept and wept and as soon as we would take breath enough for hours confessing everything we could think of you can't be loving God holding back stuff because you're afraid somebody gonna know you scared conf no 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 when it's repenting time it's time to strip when God say it's time to strip cause his word precedes his judgment since we start repenting about everything we could think of I'm so sorry I was slow for I could have read more. I could have fasted more. I could have given you more time. I had took some of your television. I took the television. Down. God, I repent. I shouldn't have said that. I was too quick. I was too mouthy. I acted too hastily. I repent. I'm sorry. But the tears would not stop flowing. 
because God's heart is broken about us right now. It's broken because we are holding a lot of stuff. Junk. And we don't want nobody to know we had to repent. I don't care who know. I repent every day. I repent now every day. When I get up, I repent for all my sin. I name I, God. I repent before I go to bed at night. When I get up, I say, God, thank you for another day. Forgive me. Forgive me for all of my sin. You can't come to Azusa under this covering talking about the curse and hold this stuff. No, honey. Come on, break it on down. Weep before the Lord and tell God, I am sorry. You got, I am wrong. And I don't care who knows I'm wrong. It's you I got to meet by myself. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna step up for me. I gotta meet you by myself. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the evil in my spirit. I'm sorry for being pernicious. Repent. Repent. You have a wonderful opportunity to step out from under the curse. Throw your hands up one more time. And this time when the choir sings and they minister, you repent like you know how to repent. Talk to God for yourself. If we could pray it off, we would. We can't. This is something you've got to do for yourself. If you know you got to kneel, kneel. If you know you got to weep, weep. But get God's attention. Let your heart break. Let your spirit pant. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You may never get an opportunity like this again. You may not be this sensitive tomorrow. You may not be this sensitive. Go for it while you can. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, we got great, we got a great work. We got a great responsibility. You want to use us. You want to use us. We got this world to save. And you can't use us because our hearts. Our hearts are not right. Oh Father. Oh Father, I'm sorry. Oh Father, I repent. I've been evil. I've been too talkative. Come on. Come on, honey. Come on. Come on, let your heart break. Let your eyes weep. Let your spirit groan. Uh, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, sis. Come on, brother. Get in touch with it. You may not be this sensitive to